says it right here on the brochure. Wednesday is the butterfly exhibit. Not today. Today's Tuesday. Halictids. Wasps in the genus Eumenes are distributed across the northern hemisphere, with only a few species making it south of the equator. There are about 107 species worldwide, 16 New World species, and about 10 species in America north of Mexico. Females are predators of Lepidopter and larvae. In this video, we will take a closer look at four species that exemplify this colorful and distinct genus. The eastern Eumenes fraternus, the western Eumenes bolii, the transcontinental crucifera, and the Rocky Mountain scullini. The genus Eumenes is fascinating in that each female builds a tiny mud nest, usually attached to a twig, in which she intends to raise a single offspring. She hunts, paralyzes, and returns to her nest with lepidopter and larvae. Once several are stuffed inside, the female lays an egg on the provisions and seals the nest. The egg hatches, consumes the provisions, pupates, and emerges through the side of the nest the following year as an adult. The genus was recognized in 1802 in Paris, where Pierre Latre published his Histoire Naturelle. In this work, he placed all the eumenid wasps with pediolate abdomens into his new genus Eumenes and those with sessile abdomens in Odinerus and Synagris. 22 years after Lautre, in 1824 North America, Thomas Say had just returned from an expedition to the headwaters of what is now the Mississippi River. In his account of the wildlife, he observed a wasp he named Eumenes fraterna. Its modern equivalent, Eumenes fraternus, is a black, medium-sized wasp with pale yellow markings. Its wings are dark, especially the leading edge. It also sports a coat of white hair on its head and thorax. And of course, its first abdominal segment is long and narrow. Males are similar to the females, only smaller, and their clypeus is completely yellow. The males also have a coat of white pubescence. Fraternus is found throughout Eastern North America, as well as parts of Southern Canada. As far as their length goes, Fraternus is about as long as a worker honeybee, at about 12 millimeters. Males are slightly smaller. 20 years later, in 1872, Ezra Townsend Cresson published Hymenoptera Texana, a report of the Hymenopterans from Texas that had been collected by various pioneers that had ventured into the Southwest. In it, he described a wasp he named after its collector, the Swiss naturalist Jacob Boll. Bolii is a large, colorful species. Cresson himself concluded his otherwise erudite description of Bolii with a rather aesthetic statement, a very handsome and distinct species. Bolii lives up to its praise. It has splashes of black, orange, and yellow. Much of the areas of black on other species are rust-colored, or ferruginous, on Bolii. Males are just as elaborately dressed as the females. Both males and females have a generous coating of pale golden hairs on various parts of their body. Bolii ranges across the southwestern United States, though it has been collected as far north as Alberta, Canada. Bolii females are larger than worker honeybees, but the males are noticeably smaller. The females typically reach 14 to 15 millimeters long. Sixteen years later, in 1888, Quebec, Father Léon Provencher published his Entomological Fauna of Canada. In it, he described a species he named Eumenes crucifera for the appearance of a black cross on the abdomen of his specimen from California. Specimens from the Northeast, like this one, have reduced yellow markings and therefore no discernible cross on their abdomens. Crucifera is a medium-sized black wasp with yellow markings. Males are smaller but basically resemble the females. Their completely yellow clypeus and their last antennal segment give them away. 
Many putative subspecies have been described over the years to try to make sense of all the variation, but they have not held up under scrutiny. As for length, Crucifera is on the small side for the genus. Females are just a bit shorter than a worker honeybee. 62 years later, in 1950, Richard Bohart at the University of California, Davis, described our last species and named it after fellow hymenopterist Herman Scullin, who collected the first specimens on the Charleston Mountains in southern Nevada. Eumenes scullini has extended yellow markings, giving it a tiger-striped appearance. It also sports a coat of golden pubescence. Its range is small, Specimens have been taken from California, Nevada, and Utah. This individual is from Utah. Helpful resources for identification begin in 1980, when William McLaughlin at the University of California, Davis, published a key to and notes on the Eumenes of America north of Mexico. It provided a good key to the species, but is not widely available. 28 years after McLaughlin, in 2008, Matthias Buck at the University of Guelph in Ontario published the Identification Atlas of the Vespidae of the Northeastern Nearctic Region. It is lavish in its photography and available free online. Its only drawback is its regional scope. It only covers five eastern species. Ten years after Buck's atlas in 2018, Yuri Grandinet at the University of Sao Paulo, Brazil, along with Fernando Knoll and James Carpenter, revised the genus in the Western Hemisphere. It is comprehensive and detailed and provides a very workable key. They united many of the previously described subspecies. Bolii, Smithii, and all but one of Crucifera's subspecies were absorbed into the type species. Great photography and a modern key make this a work of genuine quality. Of course, any effort to determine a specimen's identity should keep range maps in mind. Bolii is Western, Fraternus is Eastern, and Scullini should only be considered if your specimen came from the arid desert mountains. If we look at the faces of females and males, we see how their colors vary. Males consistently have a solid clypeus and females have variable patterns. The patterns of the females are not 100% reliable as species indicators, but it serves as a strong clue. Length is not very helpful either, but it is yet another clue. Of the species we've looked at, Bolii is the largest of the four. The other three are similar, with Crucifera being the smallest. One of the earliest questions in a key to the Eumenes will always be the pronotal carina. The pronotum has a small shelf on its anterior edge called the pronotal carina in most species. Bolii and Consubrinus lack this carina, and their shoulders appear smoothly rounded over. Next, Fraternus and Crucifera are similar, so you will need ways to tell them apart. My first glance is usually at their wing color. Both males and females of Fraternus have very dark wings, especially on their anterior margin. Next, a feature that works with the males is the hair on the hind femur. On the inner hind femur of the males of Fraternus is a significant patch of longer hairs. The other species, and especially Crucifera, the hairs are short and uniformly distributed along the segment. There is also a difference in the clypeal punctation in the males, but I could not capture this with my equipment. Seeing punctures on a yellow integument is not easy. Well, that should get you started. Good luck. As always, a special thanks go to the internet resources that make these videos possible, including the Biodiversity Heritage Library, Discover Life, and Iowa State University's Bug Guide. Look for them online. Oh, I lost my name tag.